in the British game are who sucks at playing flight sims Interviewing people while we try to land a plane Interviewing people while we try to land a plane on a plane! New subscribers may not be aware that every now and then I like to faff around in this, X-Plane 10. It's a professional flight simulator, except I don't know how any of this works. Um, but with me every episode, I try and figure it out with a special guest who I'll interview while flying them to their airport of choice. At the end of the interview, we try and land this thing together, but I'll be honest with you guys, it usually ends in death. You can catch up on past episodes there, uh, but today my guest is an esteemed fantasy novelist who is really making waves. Hugely talented, hugely inspirational, generally just huge, Neil Gaiman. It's one of his favourite authors, it's Edward Cox. Ed, how's it going? It's going very, very well. Generally huge, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's great to have you on the line. I've been looking forward to this for months now. Uh, we'll get into your work a little bit in a moment. I think we should get up in the air. I do. Take us up. Fly me away, Z. Oh, there's a little plane in front of us. Yeah, I, what the hell is he doing? Do we just have to run over him? Oh, oh and a deer. a deer. Oh, don't, don't hurt the deer. But the, the guy in the plane's fine. <laughs> He's fair game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Cool. As always, the guest chooses where we're flying to. So, Ed, where are we off to? Lapland. We're off to Lapland. We're currently in the Arctic Circle now. Uh, we're on the border of Lapland, just off the Finnish coast, the west coast of Finland. And, yeah, we're going to get up in the air in the Boeing 747. Again, Edward is nominated. We've never successfully landed this thing. Are you going to be the first, Ed, to bring us down safely? Absolutely. I can't imagine anything bad happening happening to me on this trip. Ooh, unbridled, sarcastic confidence. I love it. <laughs> For some reason, it's put us in the middle of the runway, so we don't have much space to take off. Like, that over there is the end of the runway. Oh, that's all right. I'll give us a push if we need it. That really isn't a lot of runway, is it? No, and there's electricity pylons over there as well. Um... Okay, so this is either going to be a, a real feat of ingenuity or the shortest interview you've ever done. Yeah, quite possibly. It was good chatting to you. Uh, <laughs> right, Dude, it's always always lovely chatting to you. <laughs> Hold my hand for you. <laughs> okay, here we go, my friend. Let me... Brakes off. The flaps are down. The, I've turned the flaps up really high. How do you like your flaps, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> very, very high. <laughs> oh god, let's go, let's go. Um, I, what does this button do? Don't touch All right. anything! <laughs> Alright. I think we're going to need more speed. Oh, here we go. Mm, it's looking a bit dicey. Oh, should, no, we just, no. should, should we just drive there? Oh, <laughs> this isn't enough speed. Why are we going <laughs> up and down as well? Oh, go on, up go. Oh, we're up. Oh, at the last minute. Did you like uh, that? that? Coming down beautiful. again. No, we're going up. We're okay, we're okay. I think, I think, I think we might need to get up by those cloudy things. The cloudy things. <laughs> <laughs> that is what they call them. That's the, the avionic term. phrase. You can tell I've flown before. Oh, look, there's a big bright circle over there. Oh, it gives warmth. Maybe we should write a letter about that. <laughs> Somebody should know. I'm hoping we'll see the magic light <laughs> curtains as we approach that as well. <laughs> no, honestly, the, 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 the simulator does do them, so hopefully oh, we'll see those. I have, I have often dreamt of seeing the magic light curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking a bit sketchy over there with misery water. <laughs> oh, we're tilting, we're tilting. Uh, yeah, you, you need to concentrate, Izzy. I do, because I'm, I'm going this way. I don't know if I need to be. But look at that, that's beautiful. That is, what is that? The, the, the water. Do you know, it's ridiculous. Where, where, where are we taking off from? Did you say Finland? Yeah, we're in Finland. I can't remember the name of that airport that was behind us. Um, I'm looking behind us as if I can see out the back of the Boeing 747. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, yeah, I don't know what airport that was, but yeah, we're in Finland um, and we're just going to follow this coastline up a little bit. Over that way is Sweden. Okay. So we're just going to follow the coast up and north and I've not set a destination airport, we're just going to land whenever we get bored of talking to each other. Okay. <laughs> So, so, Edward Cox, let us get into the fine work you are doing. You are the author of The Relic Guild and yes. The Cathedral of Known Things, two books as part of a trilogy. So, tell us about The Relic Guild in no more than 50 oh. words, with the last two being high peril. <sighs> you see, I have, a, I have an ongoing running joke with my editor about this, because I've never been able to sum up the book in less than... I think it's three days, right. um, and if uh, I'll, I'll be doing a reading and we'll have a and a afterwards, and if he's in the room, he'll always ask me the same question, because he knows I'll just have to stop, and he'll time me sometimes, and say, do it in 30 seconds, and then I'll get, I'll run out 30 seconds all too quickly, and without actually telling anybody anything, and people will laugh at me, see. High peril. <laughs> <laughs> High peril, yes. Um, well, look, there's, um, there's a group called the Relic Guild, and they all have magical abilities like superheroes, and they live in a place called Labras Town. And it was all lovely and dandy, and then there was this huge war, everything got ruined, and now they live in this town which is surrounded by an endless maze, and they are cut off from the rest of the worlds. Um, and then a big old baddie that they thought died in the war comes back to Labras Town and they have to find a way, the Relic Guild has to find a way to get outside and to contact the other worlds and warn them. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed the book. I thought it was just a great mix of steampunk, um, straight up fantasy. There's quite a lot of horror in there as well, I think yeah. it'd be fair to say. Yeah. Um, it's, it's absolutely fantastic and it's really, it is, I said in the intro, you're making waves. You truly are. You got nominated for a couple of awards last year. Yeah. Um, it's getting great reviews on Amazon. I didn't. I didn't win any of the awards, but I'm not bitter. Seek. I've just noticed we're bobbing around like crazy. I think I know why. The landing gear is still down. All right. Let's take the landing gear off and switch the lights on. Oh, we can switch the lights on. Get the peanuts out. <laughs> One sec. S switch off the seatbelt sign and get the trolley yeah. rolling. Oh, oh, I've just got the world. Here we go. Yeah, no, we are going the right way. We're pointing this way. And we're coming round up this coast and like Lapland's here. All right, and thank, and thank you for what you said about the book. It's... That's quite right. I, I thoroughly, I mean, I've not read it, of course. I was hoping to just no. skim it while we did this flight, but no, no, I read it last summer. <laughs> I was engrossed. I thought it was really, really good. And this is coming from a guy who honestly isn't huge on fantasy. Like, I've read some mainstream stuff that David Gemmell, Neil Gaiman, that kind of thing, but I've never really dug deep into it. And I think your book really helped me. I, I found it was very high concept but it was also accessible by the same token. So it's got me wanting to explore more of the genre. Well, so thank you to you for that. Well, that's, that means a lot, and thank you, Zeke. It's kind I did, of... however, notice I'm not in the acknowledgements. <clears throat> ah, did they leave it you says, off? Well, I've got it right here. You <laughs> thank our, for those of you who don't know, Ed and I went to uni together. Um, you thanked our lecturers, you thanked Kelly, a fellow student, and then you just said, and then the students I studied with. Oh, well, Zeke, you know, I, it was, um, I was, I went back to work at the university. I was a part of their group mm -hmm. um, when I actually got the book deal. Um, so, yeah, that, that's why they, 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 they got a mention. And I did put you in as well, but they said that, you know, because your, your name's Zeke, said it comes at the end of the alphabet and I had to make some room and, you know, no, you, you don't need to justify yourself to me, that's fine. <laughs> However, I will say that the last novelist we had on Noobs on a Plane did put me in his book, so... Oh, who was that? Uh, Joseph DeLacy. Oh, nice. So is this your ploy now to make me jealous that there might be another author in your life? 
No, it's not so much that. It's more just a case of setting a precedence that people know <laughs> if they want to come on this show, they need to write a novel and put me in it. Okay. But speaking about people in the novel who are also close to you, one of the main protagonists is named after your daughter. Yes, this is very true. How... Tell me about the thought process behind that. Was it difficult, like, separating the real-life Marnie with the fictional Marnie, or...? Yeah, I, they, I mean, they, they are separate entities. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the truth of it is, I had the character Marnie um, before my daughter was born, before we decided that the, the, my daughter was going to be called Marnie. Hmm. If you've been writing this book for... Like a decade, pretty much, haven't you? Yeah, well, I mean, it, the, the original version was for my master's degree, so now mm. I've just finished the story as a trilogy. So I've been living with it. It's like, I think it's been about eight years from the very first version to this one. Um, so I don't think I could have written the character Marnie if my daughter was already there called Marnie. I think it would have been harder for me to separate the two. Yes, of them. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, so you couldn't you couldn't put a character called Zeke in the, in the next book, could you? Because you know you, you're too close to me, so that would be. I mean, you could. There's nothing stopping you, of course, but it, <laughs> well, it, it would just be weird, wouldn't it? Or well, would it? This is it. I mean, if I did that, I might reveal things about our past. You know, people <laughs> start questioning the things that we got up to in university. Oh God, heavens no! And speaking of which, um, as you'll notice, this is all very edited. If you want to see the unedited entire flight and entire conversation, you can uh, click that button there, go into the Patreon feed, chuck in a few dollars, and you get access to all the bonus stuff. Nice. So, I think they should do that, for sure. You are a... You are a DVD extra for the modern age, seek. So, we're very low to the ground here. I'm thinking of just sticking below the cloud layer, because obviously if we go above it, we won't see anything. Yeah. Unless you want to take this high altitude. What was that? Go back to the to the side again. It, uh, it's just the sun, Ed. Oh. <laughs> Once again, Ed is baffled <laughs> by the Finnish sun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep on following this coastline. I'm going to throttle up to max. We'll go above the clouds and we, we'll see if we can see the magic sky curtain. Because <laughs> we must be close to it by now. I, I don't even know what time it is. Um... It could be midnight, yeah. for all I know. I don't know how far ahead Finland is. Well, but they have, this far north, they've got perpetual sunlight, haven't they? Depending, oh, yeah. Depending on the time of the year. You see, that's something I'd, um, I say I'd like to experience, but I keep hearing that it can drive you a bit, a bit mad. They made a movie about it. Yeah, what was that? Was it Insomnia? That had it as the premise, yeah. That was a great movie. I thoroughly enjoyed yeah, that. I, I like that. We are bobbing around like crazy here, but you know what I think we can see? I think, if I can point the straight for one bloody second, I think that may be something to do with the Aurora Borealis. No, really? It might be. Can you see it in this much light? Well, this is a good question. Maybe not. Hey, I, I, I meant to ask you something. Go for it. Uh, I, I see recently on one of your many YouTube videos, mm. which I like to go through every now and then, um, that you're not a fan of um, oh, comic, here we go. Go on. Co comic book movies. I'm not. I see you, you put up a video, you said, um, here's every, something like, here's every comic book movie, and you, you, you allowed us to watch paint dry. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got to now paint the entire hallway. Which is a shame, <laughs> just, for that, just for that gag. But uh, really worth it. I think with comic book movies, the problem is there's no stakes to it with the with a plot. You, you know which characters are going to live and which characters are going to die because they're money making machines. The, the, the Iron Man is not ever going to die. He's never in any real danger in any of the movies because they need to churn out endless sequels. So I'm sitting here, I, I'm completely emotionally detached from most comic book movies I watch. You see, I quite, I, I, being a, a comic book fan as well, hmm. I, I kind of quite like the comic book films. But I hadn't considered it from that point, and maybe you've just 
ruined it all for me and I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> well, I wouldn't imagine so because I think the thing that I miss uh, with, with these movies is as not a massive fan of comic books, I don't get the joy of like looking at a movie and going, oh, I see, they've interpreted this bit like that or that's how they yeah, brought that yeah. particular plot line to life. You, you know, So I can't appreciate it on that level. And um, didn't you smash up a keyboard as well? when you found out some particular news about a comic book film. <laughs> when I, with the announcement of uh, Ben Affleck being Batman, yeah. Who I hear it did an amazing job, despite yeah, the movie I... being terrible. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I, I should uh... take that back. Now, well, I mean, I, I haven't seen the film yet. You've got all these... I think people were, were just... Some people were so ready to jump on its back and trample it into the ground. Yes, and myself um, being one of them, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the thing is, the, the kind of there's some people you like, there's some people you don't like, and you can't imagine stuff works. I've always been, you know me, I've always sort of been a happy little bear, and I'm kind of always happy to go with the flow and just you see something. You always see the best in everything and everyone. Yeah, to a... To you a, do, to a, you I do. Suppose. Um... Again, I will watch the film and judge it for its merits. What the hell is that? I don't know. What is that? What's that? Do you know, do you think we should skip Lapland and go... go Anywhere and else. Out? I'm terrified. I, oh, it might be water. In oh, the it might just be a lake. Are we getting freaked out over water? <laughs> Well, we've, always been, we've already been confused by the sun and clouds, so... It, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's just a lake. It would help if I came out of the cloud. I kind of can't decide whether to go above or below, and I can't really see anything. Right, let's sort this out. Yeah. Wait, this is tipping without my input. We are going very, very to the right. Bring it um. back. Why is this going out of control all of a sudden, Ed? Maybe it's not a lake. I'm frightened, Zeke. Yeah, me too. It's still the only thing we can see in this cloud. And why has everything gone red? I don't know. This is not good. <laughs> maybe, well, <laughs> maybe we should just go, keep going up. That's not a bad suggestion. Because at the moment I'm pointing down, and I think on <laughs> balance... <laughs> That's sort of where the ground is, sick. Yeah, how high? We're at 6,000 feet, meters, I don't know what unit of measurement, that could be centimeters for all I know. But I'm, I'm also intrigued with this thing, I'm going to have to fly over and check it out. Yeah. At our peril. High peril. <laughs> Ooh, the, the land has gone dark. We're, we're in Mordor. Yeah, is there a, if you see a big eye, just swing to the right. Yeah, where's that? There it is! <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing? I don't know. Because all of the other lakes have disappeared. This one stands alone. Maybe we should start taking pictures and start our own um, conspiracy page on, on YouTube. Oh, I tell you what, I love going through the conspiracy theorist things on YouTube. It's brilliant. It's absolutely awesome, isn't it? Some of them are just batshit crazy. If you think the, the, the flat earther thing has really taken off. Has it? Yeah, yeah, in a big way. Um, it's been bubbling under the surface on YouTube for a while, but then recently that rapper, B.O.B., started going on on Twitter about how the world's flat and nothing can convince him otherwise and NASA's all a big conspiracy, etc. That's amazing, isn't it? I oh, mean, we've got that's... action. This, this thing's broken up. I've got a very good feeling about this, Sig. We're going to discover something that's either going to get us lots of money or probed. I don't know about you, but I'm hoping for the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see on Facebook yeah. yesterday a video went viral about the Loch Ness monster being in the Thames in London? <laughs> That's actually the plot line of Terror of the Zygons, a Doctor Who story. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should see it. The video is interesting. I'll, I'll throw it on the screen now. But yeah. Um, it, it's very good special effects if it is special effects. Well, obviously, no, I'm saying if it is special effects. Obviously, there isn't a monster in the Thames. <laughs> but um, it's a guy who typically is. He's got Parkinson's. 
The second he hits record, he's got Parkinson's. The camera's shaking around everywhere. Oh, oh, right. The only monster I see in that video is the monster who's holding the camera vertically in 2016. And now things gone. Oh, it's gone. No, hang on. It's it's right here. It's just uh, obscured by this whatever they call that in planes. The 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 the, the line. The window line, the, I think. The window the technical, line. <laughs> <laughs> the technical. It's a bloody cloud. Oh no, it can't be. Oh, right. I've got two possibilities for you. Go on. It is either a forest fire, or it is a misty forest of magical destiny. <laughs> it's one of the two. <laughs> I'm going to go for the latter. Magic. Of course, oh. we're talking about rationality. Obviously, it's the latter. Oh, obviously. Oh, or is it one of those secret <laughs> locations? Oh, what's happened? I don't know, but it's too close to the ground for it to be doing this. I uh, can't see what I'm doing. Uh, oh, there we go. I don't like the fact that it does that. There seems to be a, a, a flame in the forest down there. Oh, I think there's a hot air balloon. Oh, okay. Can we go in through it? No, don't do that. Um, he's a bit too close to the ground. I would say yes. Oh, this one though. I think we might be able to hit. Let's let's see if we can take him out. Oh, there's two to choose from. Line him up. Double points. Well, this seems a bit irresponsible, but I think. What as a as a Boeing seven four seven pilot? Yeah, I think. <laughs> like, imagine if we were in a real plane, <laughs> just the co-pilots in there. I think this is a bit irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed I think, it, but everything's yelling at me. Then might we leave oh. them in peace? One fun Maybe. thing I like to do is, in having arguments with my wife, is um, then leaving the room, changing the fact on Wikipedia so it backs up my side, <laughs> then going in and going, no, it says on Wikipedia, there. <laughs> and you're, oh, right, so, sorry. <laughs> oh, look, yeah, no, Michael Jackson was in Napalm Death for a spell. <laughs> That'd be an interesting mashup. It would, wouldn't it? Napalm Death. God, I haven't heard that name for years. They're still going, aren't they? Are they? I think so. I could be wrong. But let's look at Wikipedia. Well, if they weren't, they are now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. getting very dark. Very purpley. Very purpley. It's better than that ominous red, misty Mordor filter we had on the camera yeah. a minute ago. It's very picturesque. It is. How are we going to land in this? Uh, they'll have lights. Where is the nearest airport? How's our fuel doing? Have we got enough to turn back if we can't find it? I haven't a clue. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, how many airports are there in this part of the world? Well, Father Christmas. Is this part of the world? Happen. I don't even know where we are. <laughs> Father Christmas has to have an airport. It's 2016, though. Maybe he's got kind of like Harrier propulsion technology and he can just do a, a vertical landing these days. I don't, I uh, don't know. I, I've heard he's quite traditionalist. He is a little bit. That explains all the kind of wooden soldiers I got last Christmas when I wanted an Xbox. <laughs> like nutcrackers and things. <laughs> Screw you, Santa. With your oldie worldy toys. Yeah, and your your reindeers. You get yourself one of these, mate. I feel like we haven't uh, discussed your book enough and the reason why we're here. Oh, um, okay. Well, the reason why I'm here is it's just to spend some time with you. You've been avoiding me for the past. Well, it's been over ten years since we finished. Well, no, it's ten years this year. Isn't it that we finished university? Uh, mm, yes, yes, it would have been. Yeah. Yeah, ten years. Oh. And you've been avoiding me for all that time. That's not true. We caught up. Was it last year? I think. Yeah, that was a good night. That was an interesting <laughs> night. I'm not sure how much we can say about that without heavy editing. Uh, yeah. But that was. Um, yeah, it was good to catch up with you. It was kind of my. Interesting foray into homoeroticism. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you buzz it, because you know I'm going to have to cut here and leave that <laughs> hanging.
Um, I've got some bad news. Oh no, what? We're going in the wrong direction. We've been flying massively off course. So we were supposed to be going up this way and up into Lapland. We are... We, we veered to the right and then we're now flying south. So it is little wonder we haven't been seeing the Northern Lights. Now, are we going in the right direction now? Oh, um, what's that glowing to the left? <gasps> there they are! There it is! That's the magic glowing curtains! Oh, oh God! We have no. completely lost control of the plane! No! We've been thwarted by the magic curtain! I'm too young and pretty for this! Come on, come on, come on. Okay. That was a close one. Cool, it was a close one. Oh, look! Aurora. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Let's just bank left for a better view. Oh, that is gorgeous. So we are in Lapland proper after correcting for our oversight. I say cool. our oversight. I lay the blame entirely on you. <laughs> no, that's that's stunning. I think we need to find a place to land in the pitch black darkness. Yeah, that'll be all right. We'll be fine. Well, I think the only uh, what's what's four G like over Lapland? I uh, I'd be impressed if we can get one G. Yeah. Well, do you know, it's funny because I say what's 4G like. I, I don't know what 4G really is, just to get <laughs> my phone work. <laughs> it's four, four grams of connectivity. <laughs> so they put four grams instead of three I, grams I, into your phone when they sell it to you. I, uh, I never knew that connectivity had weight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 in grams, yeah. Was that Wikipedia again? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> or it is now. Oh, this is really stressful. It's it's pitch black. We're going in the direction of an airport. Oh, that's all right. Well, so whether it is long enough to to land a Boeing. Oh, uh, it's right in front of us, on the ground, in the middle. You see the lights keep coming up. Are we looking at this? No. No. <laughs> I don't think that's it. it oh no! Be... Over to the left, then. There's a line of lights. They're they're street lamps. That that would end badly if we try to land there. Oh. I can guarantee that's a road. Don't don't land on the street lamps. Or they could be pylons. Either way, not it's not going to be optimal. Okay, so I'm descending. I need to descend because apparently it's right on us. For those of you watching, like that's what I'm aiming for, that circle. But I can't see anything out there in the void. Oh, this is really horrible in the in the dark. But then you look up there and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I just need to periodically look up and just yeah, remember why I'm alive. <laughs> it's it's a Zen experience, see. I found it. I found the airport. Cool. See oh, that? We're, we're on a nice little yeah, approach. I can see it. We're on a nice little approach here. I need to kill the speed. Yeah. The speed kills us, uh, and I need to. We have our stuff. I'm stressing. Uh, we need we need flaps. <laughs> Do you know? Is this the wrong time to say that I really need a toilet? Yes, it's the worst time. What are you thinking? Well, you know, maybe it's not going to be an issue <laughs> very soon. It won't be. And to, uh, on that note. Um, Ed, thank you for being here, just in case we're going to die very suddenly. It's been a pleasure, Z. Uh, all of your links uh, will be down in the description box below, so guys, check them out. There's also some free short stories. You can yes. Well. Uh, audio short stories as well. Audio short stories, no less. So do check those out down below. Um, all my social links and Ed's social links will be down below. We've missed the runway. The shortest runway in the world! How the hell are we supposed to land on that? Maybe we're just really, really high and it's like four miles long or something. Yeah, but we're 19 miles, 19,000 miles above it. <laughs> I'll just land on the road. <laughs> we're going to have to. There's no way we can land on that unless I come back round again. I, I think we can get away with this thing. Look. Are we, are we doing this? Is this? Aurora is looking down at us. <laughs> How can we go wrong? Is this decided? Is this exactly what we're doing then? Yeah, the cars will get out of the way. They'll see us coming. Don't worry. Okay, let me get it down, I guess. Yeah. 
I need to find a nice straight bit so that's kind of the same angle as us. Just follow the lights. I think this bit up here looks good. I think I can turn into this and put it down along this stretch. I've got a very good feeling about this seek. Okay, here we go. We are very, very close to landing. We've got a good speed going on. This is nice and slow. There are cars. I yeah, can't see the road. Yeah, they'll move the out of the way. Oh, I can see the road now. We're all right. Carry on I the way can, you are. I can only see it when there's cars there, so they need to kind of keep me right. Oh, my God, it's going to the right. Yeah, just follow it round. Follow it I can't. I can't see the... Oh, we've lost the road. It's going that way. Well, the land land around the road looks quite looks quite um quite flat. Don't lie, you can't see a thing. There could be trees. There could be anything. I've just got Chances are, given we're in Finland, probably I've got a, trees. I've got a good feeling. I'm I'm using the force. 50, 40, 30, oh, oh, there's trees. 30, 20, 10. There's trees, Zeke. There's trees. Oh, there are trees on our left. I can't see any in front of us. There are trees Curry, in front of us. Oh, there are trees in front of us. Zeke, in the forest. Oh. I think we're the first, that's alright, just, just keep it flat. Style it out, style it out. Just keep it flat. Oh, there we go, there we go, turn left. Let's run, let's run, let's run. Let's turn left, that's it, straighten it out. Taken off again by accident. There we go. Have we landed? We haven't. Don't just, have to stop rolling. Just, just follow the, just follow the traffic. Yeah, makes sense. So, is this the first time we've landed? I wouldn't call that a successful landing. I did land in the sea in episode seven, I think, with a Boeing. I missed the runway and just piled into the sea. Um, oh, we should definitely go through a drive-through now. The fact that we didn't know where we were going in the first place should have nothing to do with that. No, I agree. That is a factor. Edward, thank you so much for joining me on this pleasurable flight through the snowy wonderland of, of Lapland. Zeke, thank you for having me on, dude. It's been a pleasure, and it's been good to catch up with you. No, the pleasure's been all mine. You take care. Uh, next book is out when? Uh, August or September time. It's called The Watcher of Dead Time. The Watcher of Dead Time. Guys, check it out. All the links you need are below. We're just going to take a little jolly through this forest. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> catch you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>